Good, everyone.
spießt, oder? Oh Gott.
Yeah, hello and welcome to Kemba Bushcraft. Yeah, today I'm in a new place here in Royal Forest. Uh, I went down to a lake again to uh, make a video down there, but again there were uh, uh, woodworkers that was cutting down trees, so there was a lot of noise there. Is here, Dusa? Yeah. And you can see I have Cornelius with me. And uh, while the bacon is cooking and my bread is finished, uh, I will show you my little lamps, my little um, soapstone lamps. We call them fat stone here in Denmark, and uh, tell you a little bit about these. So I just have to uh, turn my bacon. I can see, so it won't be uh, burnt. Yeah, I watched a video on YouTube, a man who's making such lamps. Uh, it's the same principle as the Birka lamp, and it's lard again. That's why Cornelius is very interested in this, because it smells delicious. It's uh, pig fat that I use, and uh, yeah, I made two different kind of version of this. This one is, uh, I used the, the character that is in the stone. And uh, for this one, I also made. Oops. And for this one, I also made this, so it will be a little bit higher. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that, but I saw a video on YouTube, uh, man, that make these, and uh, of course I will try it myself. So I ordered some uh, uh, soap stone. Uh, as I said before, we call it uh, fit stain, fat stone. But it's a stone that is uh, harvested in Greenland and Norway and other places in the world. I had heard that uh, Brazil is a very good place to, to get soapstone from. And it's very easy to work with. Uh, it's very soft and uh, you can use actually the same tools as you use to uh, carve in, um, in wood. And uh, I made a little tutorial about uh, this one, the first I made. And uh, yeah. Uh, you can see it here. I hope you like. Uh, I bought these uh, three stones here in Denmark where I live. I had hoped for some dark stones, but I got these. They are green, white, a little bit rose, but uh, they weigh about three kilos. And I choose this stone for my first little project. Uh, and I made a template for it. You can see here, that's how it's going to look. So uh, first I have to uh, copy the templates to the stone and I use a little marker for this. Yeah, and this is for the middle. Uh, you'll see later why it looks like this. But uh, yeah, now I'm ready and I can begin carving it. And uh, I use the same tools as I use for my spoons and cooks, uh, made for wood, but they work perfectly in this uh, soft stone. These soapstones are uh, original from uh, Greenland and Norway. And uh, some of them have asbestos in, so be careful if you have a stone that is uh, containing asbestos because there's a lot of dust and you can see here I use my carving knife to carve out the stone it's very soft and easy to work in now I've got the shape outside and uh, I also make these markings on the uh, outside so you can see where I have to cut it Just have patience and uh, yeah, do it a little bit at a time, exactly when you are carving a kuksa or a stone. And you can see here on the inside, uh, there's a little uh, dot here 
that I will use later for my wick. And see my hands get very uh, dusty, so be careful if there's asbestos in. Looking good. Together with the stones, I bought these tools that are meant for uh, carving these stones. Don't know what they call in uh, in English, but you can see here how it looks. And uh, I will use them also when I'm making uh, some small figures. I'm playing of making uh, some figures of the old gods, Odin, Thor, and so on. And this is for the final work. Yeah, and uh, then I use some sandpaper to soften the surface, to make it smooth. Here you can see, almost finished. And I bought some special wax for it. And when I apply that, uh, the soapstone will be uh, waterproof and uh, have a nice surface that won't um, give you white hands from the dust. So just apply it and uh, let it dry. It makes it a little bit shiny, but that's okay. Then I made a wick from uh, linen that I put down there. See here? Yeah, and then I uh, melted some lard, pig's fat, and just pour it in. And the great thing about uh, this is you could transport it easily. If it was oil, you had to be careful not to spill it. Yeah, and then I lit it up for the first time. And here you can see in the dark. Yeah, I have made another stone, you can see here, uh, from another piece of it. Yeah, a little thing. Um, uh, I've read that it's, there's uh, asbestos, asbestos in uh, these stones, but not in all. And uh, the ones I bought, uh, they wrote that no, there was no asbestos in that. Uh, otherwise, you have to be careful when you uh, process it, because there will be a, a lot of dust, and uh, you don't inhale that. But um, yeah, uh, I think I heard that uh, the soapstones in Brazil didn't have asbestos in. I'm not sure, but the Viking used it. Uh, uh, they had Greenland where they uh, um, settled and then they exported the fat stone or the soapstone, uh, the same with uh, Norway, to the Viking Age. And uh, yeah, I also read a place that uh, soapstone was actually used as pots for cooking their food in. Uh, I didn't know that. I never seen that in a Viking market. So that was a little uh, extra special thing that I got a knowledge about the Viking Age. So you can use fat stone to uh, cook your food in over the fire and that means it can resist uh, the heat from the fire. That's awesome. Yeah. Now I think the bacon is finished and uh, I think I'll put over my coffee and uh, yeah, begin eating together with Cornelius. I'm sure he's very hungry. He's always hungry for for bacon, isn't it Cornelius?
Yeah, and did you notice my little table I made? Um, very easy. I made it from from um, from oak and just yeah put these legs on so I can take them off and uh, transport them. The only thing is that when it's um, down the hill, it's not a good thing to have. Uh, yeah, this will go. This will do. And then I have my bacon. Not now, Cornelius. Not yet. I think I'll. And of course, my bread here. So, I think I give it's okay, Connie. A little bit hot. Yeah. Hmm. Onion is not for you, Cornelius. Hmm? You're more hungry? Also have some meat. Score everyone. Mm. Yeah, and as the title indicates. Um, this video about stone, uh, stones, and yeah, see if I can find it. Yeah, you saw this sharpening stone. I'll bring you a little bit closer in a moment so you can see it. And I have a little story to tell about this. But first, I'll eat my food. Hmm. Mehr Bacon? Hm? Kan du spise mere? Åh oh godt. Så er der vand her, ikke også? Prøv at se her. Ja, der er vand her. Til at drikke. Brugt det.
Yeah, and now to this little stone, a sharpening stone and a whetstone. Um, I saw a TV broadcast uh, about the Vikings and there was something in that that uh, uh, made me interested in these stones because they said in the in the broadcast in the in the film that uh, Vikings exported uh, these stones from Norway in large quantities and they actually used them as ballast in the Viking ships. So when they left Norway and sailed to Denmark or, or farther uh, south, uh, these were ballast in the ships. And uh, those of you who don't know uh, what ballast is, is something heavy you come in the bottom of your ship so it will be more stable. And then uh, when they arrived and they had sold all the stones, well then they could put other stuff down there perhaps uh, some uh, stones from the local area or other heavy stuff. But nevertheless, that uh, started my uh, interest in this stone and I uh, made a little research on the internet and I made a little video about these stones. So I would like to show you that now. Every Viking owned a stone like this and they traded massive quantities of them too. Whetstones are one of the most common finds from the Viking Age. Whetstones were absolutely a necessary item. Farmers needed them for their tools and they were used in the household too. Whetstones were also an important part of the equipment needed by a warrior. Vikings warriors needed to sharpen their swords, axes, arrows and knives. Unlike many of the items we have found from the Viking Age, whetstones were used by everyone, warriors, craftsmen and housewives, rich and poor alike. These finds can tell us a lot about production, trade and contact networks from the Viking Age Otmorch. As early as the Viking Age, they were mass-produced and distributed over great distances. Whetstones from Norway have been found in numerous countries. While the quarry in Eidsberg in Telemark was well known, and the whetstone from this quarry was usually light grey in colour, it was when the geologists got involved that the new site in Mostermark and Tusberg were discovered, that they found out that there were two different kinds of whetstone, because here the stone color is darker. A common conception is that the white stone from Norway is the first export item, and they were transported out of Norway by ships in large quantities. They used the stones as ballast. This trade began as early as the 8th century. From Norway to Denmark, the production of whetstone in Norway started in Tønnelag. First export went from this area to Ribe in the west coast of Denmark in the 8th century. Ribe is considered to be the first established city in Scandinavia. It developed into a major trading post during the Viking Age. There were not much suitable stones in Denmark, so they had to import whetstone. The cluster of 3 inches to 4 inches whetstone were found in a Viking Age harbor near Frederica Sound in the northern part of Denmark. 100 years later, in the early 9th century, production of whetstone from Norway also began at Iceberg in Telemark. But what was it about the whetstone from Norway that made them so desirable for other countries? They are made of slate and have hard mineral grains that could act as an abrasive when sharpening tools. The whetstone from Mustermark are relatively fine-grained these are well suited for fine grinding, putting the final edge on the sword. The stone from Iceberg is more coarsely grained, but also very well suited for sharpening. These whetstones could be traded far and wide as trade overall became more organized. It was a challenge and sometimes dangerous to transport goods by sea during the Viking Age. In more urban areas like Kaupang in Westfall, trades became safer. Here there were people with power and resources who could ensure that the marketplace was safe. Scientists have also come up with this theory of nothing less than why the Viking Age began. Studies show that trade between the northern and southern part of Scandinavia was very important, so important that these trade routes were protected. Vikings did raid their own, but measures put in place to protect trade and the benefits of trade meant that raiding villages along the route was less attractive. So those Vikings that wanted to continue this activity had to find new hunting grounds outside of Scandinavia. 
and they began the race overseas into Ireland, Scotland and England. Yeah, I hope you find that interesting. I've tried to uh, see if I could get uh, such a stone from Norway, but I can't find any places they sell in Norway. So I had to look up on the internet and on uh, Etsy I find a guy called um, Alan Andrist. He's the owner of a company called Nord Trader, uh, Nordic Trader, and of course I put a link to his um, page on, on uh, Etsy. And uh, yeah, he sells these stones and he says it's the same uh, mineral as uh, the ones in Norway. These are called schist, micro crystalline quartz, something like that. I write it down here so you can see it. And um, it should be the same kind of stones as in Norway. And uh, yeah, I bought this from him, but I was a little bit disappointed, not because uh, he, he told me that it was uh, three and a half inch long, and this is, but I want a longer one. So he's making a, a six inch uh, sharpening stone for me, uh, and when he's finished, he'll send it to me. He lives in the USA, and uh, yeah, well, those of you who have lived over in the USA can get it sooner than me. It took me three weeks to get this. Yeah, and the, as I said in the in the little video, uh, these are one of the most common finds in, in Viking graves. And actually in the, the Gellestad ship that was discovered in 2020, they found uh, these kind of stones uh, that Vikings used. Uh, and as I said, they were uh, exported uh, to other countries, Ribe in Denmark and Hedeby and other places down south. Yeah, I hope you find this interesting and uh, I just put a, I'm, I drilled a hole in it. It was not easy because it's very, it's very hard, but I, I managed and I put a, a little uh, leather strap on so I can have it on my belt. But when I get the big one, I'll make a little sheet for it so I can have it on my belt. Yeah. Yeah, it's boiling.
to, but you shall not go over to him. I have to put him in leash when he hears such thing, otherwise he's just running. Yeah, folks, this was all for now. I hope you enjoyed this little video uh, where I showed my soapstone uh, Birka lamps with the lard in and uh, my little sharpening stone, my Viking whetstone. And the stories are told about these uh, very interesting uh, stones. Yeah, yeah. and as I said in the beginning, I had planned another place, but uh, the woodworkers were uh, very noisy there. So I moved to this area and it's very beautiful here. Uh, and uh, no people around. That's a plus two. Yeah. And again, remember to uh, like and share my videos and subscribe if you uh, haven't done that yet. That means a lot to me. And uh, share my videos to people who you think could be interested in uh, seeing the things I'm doing out here. Yeah. Yeah, once again, thank you for watching Kimber Bushcraft. I hope to see you again on the next one. Bye bye. Take care.